Lesson 4 for January 16 to 22, The Hard Way. Ready for teaching on the 23rd of January. Read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, January 17, Prophecy Fulfilled. And our texts for today are Isaiah chapter 7, verses 14 to 16. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings." In Isaiah 7, 14-16, Emmanuel is a sign linked to the specific dilemma of Ahaz. Before the child Emmanuel would be old enough to decide between different kinds of food, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted, it said in verse 16. This refers to the land and kings of Syria and northern Israel. As we read in Isaiah 7, verses 1 and 2, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to make war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told to the house of David, saying, Syria's forces are deployed in Ephraim. So his heart and the heart of his people were moved as the trees of the woods are moved with the wind. And verses 4 to 9. And say to him, Take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint-hearted for these two stubs of smoking firebrands. For the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim and the son of Remaliah have plotted evil against you, saying... Let us go up against Judah and trouble it, and let us make a gap in its walls for ourselves, and set a king over them, the son of Tabal. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass, for the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within sixty-five years Ephraim will be broken, so that it will not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son." If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. So the people, including the Old Testament Emmanuel, whoever he was, as we have already read in verses 14 and 15 of chapter 7, would be forced to return to the diet of nomads, as we read in chapter 7, verses 21 and 22. It shall be in that day that a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep, so it shall be, from the abundance of milk they give, that he will eat curds, for curds and honey every one will eat who is left in the land. But while they would be poor, they would have enough on which to survive. Question. When was the prophecy regarding Syria and northern Israel fulfilled? First of all, let's look at 2 Kings 15, verses 29 and 30. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Lijon, Abel, Beth, Makkah, Genoa, Kadesh, Hazor, Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and he carried them captive to Assyria. Then Hoshea, the son of Elah, led a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, and struck and killed him. So he reigned in his place in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. And Second Kings 16, verses 7 to 9. So Ahaz sent messages to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Assyria and from the hand of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria heeded him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Kerr and killed Rason and First Chronicles 
5, verse 6, And Bera, his son, whom Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, carried into captivity, he was leader of the Reubenites. And verse 26, So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, that is, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria. He carried the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Nasa into captivity. He took them to Halor, Habor, Hara, and the river of Gozan to this day. This prophecy of Isaiah was given about 734 BC. In response to the bribe of Ahaz, Tiglath-Pileser III did what he probably would have done anyway. He smashed the northern coalition, conquered the Galilee and Transjordan regions of northern Israel, deported some of the population, and turned the territories into Assyrian provinces for 734-733 BC. The remainder of Israel was saved when Hoshea, after murdering King Pekah, surrendered and paid tribute. In 733 and 732 BC, Tiglath-Pileser conquered Damascus, the capital of Syria. Then he made Syria into Assyrian provinces. So, by 732 BC, within about two years of Isaiah's prediction, Syria and Israel had been conclusively defeated, and it was all over for the two kings who had threatened Ahaz. Soon after, Shalmaneser V replaced Tiglath-Pileser III in 727 BC. King Hoshea of Israel committed political suicide by rebelling against Assyria. The Assyrians took the capital city of Samaria in 722 BC and deported thousands of Israelites to Mesopotamia and Media, where they were absorbed into the local populations eventually and lost their identity. Let's look at Isaiah 7 verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within 65 years Ephraim will be broken, so that it will not be a people. Within 65 years, Ephraim would no longer even be a people. God had predicted what would happen to the enemies of Judah, but his point to Ahaz was that this would happen anyway without any need to rely on Assyria. So, to finish today, think, if you were living in the northern kingdom while all this was happening, how easy it would be to lose faith. What can we do to learn to keep our faith intact so that when tomorrow's calamities come, we can stay firm? And for that, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 25. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here, in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who, through him, believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides for ever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures for ever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. 
So, until we meet him in the clouds. May God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. It's supported by the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel Australia and is rebroadcast by Christian Record Services and through podcasts at It Is Written in the United States, Hope Channel Germany and through Apple iTunes and SoundCloud. Remember, God is always faithful.